welcome back uh, to to this part uh, in this part we are going to discuss about identifying negative automatic thoughts and i would like to begin with a very very powerful quote by albert ellis there are three musts that hold us back i must do well you must treat me well and the word must be easy unfortunately none of that works in our favor at any given point of time so these not negative automatic thoughts that i'm going to talk about they are very very fleeting they are brief they come and go many a times you don't even realize that you have been having a negative automatic thoughts but they are constantly there and and trying to either either help you in your becoming or hindering in your becoming in some way or the other they are related to your core beliefs in some way or the other the idea is to pay attention bring them back into awareness see uh, what core belief uh, these negative automatic thoughts are related to and try having a more more functional way of living where uh, where you have uh, these negative automatic thoughts in your awareness so it's not this that people who who start practicing cbt or who are trained in cognitive behavioral interventions suddenly they 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 have this switch from um, where you know they can switch on their positive thoughts and just switch off their negative thoughts they do have negative thoughts uh, all the time uh, but uh, the difference is there is that they are able to bring it into their awareness they are able to pinpoint they are able to see the negative automatic thought and they are able to also see the connect between the thought and the emotion and as a result people who are aware they are able to also change it and most times than not it it kind of uh, helps some of the inner dialogues uh, that that you would see uh, that are related with your negative automatic thoughts now these could be related with your childhood experiences the uh, the um, emotions or the thoughts or, or the dialogues that have been built around your childhood what your significant others your family members your peers might have told you as a uh, part of growing up during during your um, critical periods of development sometimes these messages they stay sometimes uh, you you are able to kind of work around them and tell yourself that this isn't true uh, so a lot of times uh, beliefs like i am not good enough i am a loser i am not competent i don't deserve this job i don't belong i'll never be a good teacher everybody is better than me the students hate me all of those thoughts uh, are brought into our awareness especially when we start a career especially when we start teaching a lot of times we feel that you know we have a lot of fear for um, evaluation we need the approval of the students uh, colleagues and people in general so as a result we fixate on all the mistakes that we make during uh, during our careers and not just in the starting phase uh, in every phase of our lives whatever mistakes that we make uh, we we kind of uh, we get stuck there and then we do not acknowledge ourselves for all the learning that we have had based on that particular mistake or or based on what the scenario might have uh, made us uh, learn so i have brought uh, for you a thought cascade i mean you know take an example from your own life any 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 life event and and try revisiting also your core belief think about the precipitance think about the culture that you're coming from think about think about your uh, past history in this particular diagram i have tried using the example of perfectionism that how how we uh, we have uh, we we are, we are always in a rat race for perfectionism uh, not just for ourselves but for our kids our people that we love people who are uh, important to us we all the time want them to excel in life and unfortunately it's it's not it's not the idea is is not uh, is not that of excelling the idea somewhere um, is um, of, of of being perfect in terms of Uh, how many of you have given up on writing a research article because it was not the perfect paper that you wanted to some of you might have given up on writing the book that you have been planning halfway through or midway through because you thought this is not how i wanted to be a lot of us uh, are, are are in between something and then we drop it because uh, according to our own standards that we have set for ourselves uh, it 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 does not match it is nowhere near Uh, the expectations that we have built around us so we kind of drop it in between so here in this particular case let's say that you know i start believing that i'm not good in, good enough or i am incompetent the coping mechanism is um, 
let's say that you know we have a performance at college or or at the university you have a paper presentation or you have a lecture and because your core belief is this that i am incompetent so you keep thinking of trying to avoid because uh, this this particular presentation or lecture because you keep thinking that if i am going to make a presentation i might make a fool of myself and people are going to evaluate me judge me and laugh at me and i have um, failed in the past so the automatic thought tells me that i'm going to fail at this again and this automatic thought generates uh, anxiety in me and ultimately what do i do i withdraw my name for the from the event or if let's say even if i do not withdraw my name from the event um, uh, it just makes me more nervous so much so that when i actually uh, go there to present my paper or my my lecture then these anxious thoughts they just kind of choke me up and i'm not able to utter a single word and i i i just reiterate in my head uh, i keep telling myself that you know i knew i would fail at this and i have failed at this again so the end result is there is that you have been feeling anxious and sad and now you are just feeling more sad because of the thought that was activated now now just just uh, for a moment consider this that maybe i have been told as part of my growing up that i am not good enough and maybe uh, maybe that is my core belief that i am incompetent or or i am uh, i am i'm going to be a failure i'm a loser or or whatever it is for the person and i have this college event but there is a friend who tells me that you know i have seen you perform and i have listened to that lecture that you gave and it was excellent why don't you give it a try and uh, we'll see um, how do we take it from there so after much motivation from my friend and and some very very um, positive audience um, in uh, in the audience hall i uh, think uh, i i just revise my thought and then i think that all right let me try doing it i mean i was already thinking that i'm going to fail what can be worse so i go ahead and i look at those warm faces my my friends in the audience who are smiling at me my colleagues who are being nice to me and and i it, it tells me that it's not as bad as i was imagining the end result in this case is going to be different i might end up my lecture presentation it may not go as fantastically as i might have planned because again you know the idea is there is that in my head perfectionism it has been troubling me it was not the perfect lecture it was not the best possible lecture uh, but still i was able to give it so chances are that uh, i will not end up feeling as sad as in the previous scenario so every thought when you talk about uh, cognitive behavior therapy every thought every emotion is interrelated in some way so if we look at emotions that you know whenever you are feel do this do this this is a fantastic exercise for yourself do it, do this for yourself that if you're feeling sad or depressed chances are that the embedded thoughts are that of loss or failure now this cannot uh, be uh, kind of uh, you know um what should i say this this um, not getting the right word um uh, it cannot be limited to personal failures or it cannot be li uh, limited to um failures related to your work but it can be failures in in terms of relationships in terms of who you see uh, yourself as a person or or a loss maybe imagined or real all of that so if you are feeling sad or depressed chances are that the thoughts are tied around a failure a feeling of failure or 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 a sense of loss if you if the um experienced emotion is guilt or shame then chances are that the thoughts are tied around feelings of self condemnation that you're feeling that you have really really um not lived up to the expectations of your parents and uh, they uh, they um, had had better expectations of you and you thought they always thought that you would do better in life but you haven't so you you keep self condemning yourself that you know i have not done enough to make them happy anger annoyance resentment is usually embedded in the feelings of unfairness you know the word is unfair people are unfair everybody is unfair nobody treats me fairly so i keep feeling ang uh, i keep feeling angry i keep feeling annoyed and i am resentful to the world in general when you're talking about frustrations frustrations are mostly about expectations so this uh, can be an interesting thing to do for yourself if you have been able to identify your emotion try going back to the thought that is leading to that emotion and then it is going to make sense what we are talking about right now so frustration uh, emotions uh, related to or feelings related uh, to frustration is always embedded in the idea of expectations or the thoughts 
or ideations around expectations. Anxiety, worry, fear uh, is always related with fear of negative outcome. I do not know what the outcome is going to be, but still, uh, I know that it's not going to be what I expect it to be. Inferiority is mostly embedded in the idea of uh, uh, not, not being good enough or not being enough. So you always have this sense, you keep comparing yourself or you, you feel that others are comparing uh, you uh, to them and there's always a sense of that, you know, um, I am not good enough, the other person is always always better than me. And a lot of this goes back to childhood practices also uh, in our culture, uh, parents unknowingly because they are again, you know, as old as their kids. So many a times unknowingly without uh, without uh, probably meaning any harm they end up saying things or doing things that have long-term consequences for for the children uh, boys or girls they compare siblings they compare friends they compare peers and that goes a long way i mean uh, that stays with the person for a long long time and loneliness is always related to thoughts um, uh, around uh, lack of love and attention that you know nobody loves me I am uh, not loved enough, I am not adorable, I am not as loved as my sister, brother, uh, mother, father, um, anybody at all in the family, outside the family, my friends have a more loving family, I do not, or my students love uh, my colleague more, they love me less, all of that and then you start feeling this deep sense of loneliness. And then you come to hopelessness and discouragement. If that is the emotion that you've been able to identify with, chances are that uh, the, the thoughts are around never-ending problems. So a lot of times it's also embedded in the fact that how are you construing uh, or, or looking at life around you. Nobody promised that life is going to be a bed of roses. I was not born with a certificate from God that said that henceforth your life is going to be a bed of roses. And I'm sure no, none of you also received that, that certificate, right? So, uh, but, but unfortunately, people who dwell a lot in, in, in terms of focusing upon the problem or the negative outcomes of events around them, they keep telling themselves that, you know, there is no hope, nothing is happening as per, especially uh, during these times, uh, whatever challenges that we are going through during COVID-19, we hear that dialogue a lot that, you know, how difficult this year is and how difficult... Um, uh, uh, our lives uh, have become of course there are challenges there are real life challenges uh, things are not ideal and things are not as we would want them to be there is a sense of uh, there's a fear there is there, there is a sense of insecurity around our loved ones and all but uh, there are also new learnings there are also things uh, about which you can be hopeful about and you can focus on more and that is what uh, cbt uh, does so, so once you understand the connect between the emotion and the thought, then you need to ask yourself that have I correctly identified the upsetting event? Sometimes you think that a particular event is upsetting. Let's say that, you know, my class did not go as planned and I, I feel very upset about it. And I, I my um, sibling asked me about it that, you know, why are you uh, looking upset? Or my spouse asked me and I say that, oh, I was expecting different outcomes from this particular class and it didn't go as planned. Um, and and this uh, this may be a very very small trigger to something uh, that was upsetting me from the morning maybe uh, something that was way more way more um, uh, cogent in terms of its impact something that meant more than just this experience so you it's it's important that you identify the upsetting event correctly and then also the fact that do I want to change my negative feeling about the situation. Do I want things to be different? Do I want to relook or change my lens? Do I want to construe my uh, my situation differently? Do I want to have a better life? Do I want to be a better person? Do I want to be a better communicator? If the answer to all of that is yes, then you definitely want to change your negative feelings about the situation. And also, have I kind of uh, identified my automatic thoughts uh, properly or not? So that becomes a very, very important question that am I able to kind of go back and, and, and think about the automatic thoughts that are related to my core beliefs. Have I identified those as well correctly or not? And then if I'm trying to substitute my response with a more rational response, is that convincing enough? Let's say that, you know, I have had a bad class and I'm not happy with the outcome and the automatic thought uh, generated is uh, this, that I'm incompetent, I'm not good enough, I'm a loser, I cannot do this properly, I do not belong, teaching is not my forte, whatever, <clears throat> so on and so forth, right? 
so um, when you are giving an alternate explanation a more rational explanation to yourself is that convincing enough so you tell yourself that yes uh, uh, you know uh, this class may not have gone well i will be better prepared for the next class and i'm going to take feedback and i'm going to work on that feedback and i'm going to make sure that i am a better teacher tomorrow than i am today so you have to make sure that you are not kind of making false promises with yourself that oh no this is this is nothing uh, next class is going to be better then that's a very hollow or that's a that's a very empty statement to make to yourself because you're not promising yourself anything so your rash, rational responses are they convincing enough so that is uh, a question that you'll need to ask so i would want uh, all of us to you know kind of stop here and think now that you know so much about the cognitive model you know about the cognitive distortions you know about the emotion and thought connect can you identify some of your own negative automatic thoughts can you sit down and think about the last upsetting event that you had think about that event take out time after this uh, talk and write down your negative automatic thoughts as honestly as possible if you want to benefit from it and then try and see that what is the embedded core belief what is the distortion that this particular negative automatic thought is related to chances are that that is going to make you feel a lot better at least it's going to bring into your awareness your negative thoughts and then you might be able to identify the embedded distortion and because we have already talked about cognitive distortions you know that what uh, a cognitive distortion uh, does to us of course in in the subsequent parts i'm going to also talk about few strategies to to help you uh, tackle these uh, distorted thoughts but take out this time and and think about the negative thoughts also uh, before after you do this uh, also think about that why is it why is it important to address the problem and how to address the problem you have to if if you have been anxious or if you have been feeling low or if you have been worried about uh, your work schedule you have been worried about your quest for perfectionism or you have been procrastinating or you have been doing anything that is not making you happy right now in this moment you are not able to deduce the joys of learning or doing what what it is that you do then sit down and ask yourself that how long have i been feeling this way am i doing something constructive about the problem or i am simply avoiding it i am not doing the work uh, and i am avoiding it because i don't like that particular area are uh, the thoughts that i am visiting and revisiting are they realistic in any sense of the word would it be helpful or hurtful if i express my feelings not just to myself to others around me as well and is it is it that that i am making myself unhappy about a problem that is not even in my control so just thinking about covid 19 and how challenging life has become is not going to make life any easier rather than being mindful of our present being a bit more constructive taking it easy recalibrating certain expectations around ourselves and around our loved ones that would be more more helpful but things that are not going to be in my direct control thinking about it is not going to be a solution also am i denying am i being defensive am i being dismissive of my emotions things that are upsetting to me so you may want to take out time and think about it my expectations about the world are, are my expectations realistic does the world have to be as per i want it to be who promised it that the world is going to be fair so you have to again you know recalibrate your expectations around realism expectations around yourself again tie it around realistic parameters realistic uh, uh, aspirations for yourself things that are doable things that are not putting a lot of pressure on you especially during these challenging times am i feeling hopeless and experiencing low self esteem if the answer is yes then i would say um, stop right there think about what you're feeling think about what is making you feel like that think about how can you change it and try revising the way you've been thinking about the problem that might help so summarizing part 2 i would say that we talked about identifying our own negative automatic thoughts we talked about certain characteristics of negative automatic thoughts we talked about the connect between emotion and thought and how these are uh, go a long way 
in helping us understand our own dilemmas in life, our situations in life. And sometimes if we just take out uh, some time and bring these negative automatic thoughts into our awareness, those are times um, that, that might help us to bring about some real changes. So I'm going to see you again in the next part. Thank you so much for your patience.